Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I'm back again with the last of these Star Trek kits that I'm going to put together. This is the Klingon Vorcha class battle cruiser. It is one of four ships from Metal Earth for the Star Trek collection. I've already done both Enterprise, the original series, and Enterprise D from the next generation. And I've also done the Klingon Bird of Prey. So now it's time to do the last one of Vorta. And looking at this, and looking at this, I don't think there's going to be a lot of need for dowel rods and marbles. It looks like everything, for the most part, is going to be angled. But one way to find out. Let's crack it open. Tear, 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 and open that. You got your two very detailed and laser etched sheets of pieces, and your typical instructions, so it would seem. And as before, you've got a little diagram that talks about inserting tabs or, excuse me, talks about you know how to insert the tabs into the and fold them and how to twist them. You're pointing out insertion holes, pointing out what the tabs are. A little diagram of needle nose pliers saying that needle nose pliers are helpful for assembling, even though they advertise you all you need is tweezers. It does help to have one or two other tools. And you've got your blue circle for bending the tabs and your triangle for twisting 90 degrees and a little diagram to go with that. Otherwise you have and you have your two sheets with all the numbers pointing to the different pieces. Because in your flow chart it tells you the number of the piece and, and generally how to fold it and we're dealing with a kit that's two-sided or a instruction sheet that is two-sided so we will start with number one things i used for assembly a pair of tweezers as with all the kits these are your most important tool i also in some parts use the needle nose pliers to bend over longer pieces and something fairly new is this dental tool type kit it's a little pick I found it very useful for reaching in and, and pulling out some small tabs made it easier to fit things together the kit starts off simply enough you just building up little small parts, bending them over and connecting them to slowly build up the detail of the ship. Many of the tabs on this kit are hidden and you twist them 90 degrees to make them fit tight. There are tabs that fold over. I often use my fingernails to fold them over. Sometimes a little help from the tweezers. And I will frequently use my fingernails to make small adjustments to get the parts to fit together. I use needle nose pliers to bend over longer pieces to keep them from bending incorrectly, to keep them straight when they bend. This kit reminds me a lot of the Star Wars Star Destroyer kit that I've already built because you have so many little small pieces to connect and build it up and that gives it a lot of detail.
If it looks like the parts come together easy, keep in mind it took over two hours to complete this kit. I edited it down to highlights because who wants to sit through over two hours of video? As always, try to pay close attention to the directions and check with the pictures of the finished kit on the back to make sure you're not folding pieces the wrong way or putting them together wrong. It can be easy to misunderstand and also you may have a problem where the pieces aren't quite fitting because you've got one of the tabs in the wrong slot. I had a little bit of trouble here and there but not too much with this kit. Removing the parts from the little metal trees or spruce can be tricky. I use tweezers to help hold the parts flat and to keep them from bending or breaking in the wrong place. In this kit, all of the curves are achieved by bending over lots of little flaps. I didn't have any need for dowel rods or marbles in this kit. It can take 10 or 20 minutes sometimes to bend and adjust all the tabs to fit the part together. Not all of the parts will be that tough to connect, some of them are, some of them take time, and some of them will fall right into place. Be patient. Towards the end, you have to fit the upper body section that you built up to the lower body section. Attaching the two larger parts can be challenging. I ended up starting towards the neck of the ship and working my way towards the back, connecting and bending over tabs as I went. And then after joining the, the main part of the body, I moved on to joining the nacelles. The instructions have you bend up all of the side pieces on the nacelles before you put it together. And I found that some of those side pieces get in the way, so I had to bend them back out to have room to fit together and then bend them back up once I had all the tabs in place. I found this dental type tool to be helpful for pulling out tabs or bent too far inward. I wish I'd have thought of using that tool several kits back, it would have made things easier. Introducing the Klingon Vorcha. This kit turned out nicely. I do like the finished look of it. I still have to say that the Bird of Prey is, is still my favorite of the Star Trek Metal Earth kits. And now I have a complete set. There's a lot of little parts to bend and fold and, and that's what gives it its detail between that and the laser etching. This one has a lot of nice three-dimensional detail. It would probably be a good kit to start with there are not a lot of curves where you have to use dowel rods or marbles or something to shape the, the rounded parts. 
everything is pretty much just bending over tabs and, and minor shaping with tweezers to get the somewhat rounded shapes. From the Fascinations uh, Facebook page, there was a discussion about which Star Wars models should we pick next. I wonder if they're going to do any more Star Trek. Time will tell. We'll see. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments about, well, anything in this video, please leave them down below. I thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.